What is up, guys? So I've got this absolute monstrosity behind me. You see, we are halfway there. Uh, but I've been away from YouTube for a little while, just getting uh, everything together. We're slowly collecting parts. Uh, I've actually got a job now, so I uh, have a little bit of income that can go into this thing. But you see, we have the front completely done. And I'll give you a walkthrough, but not today. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how we've gotten this far, uh, everything we've done to it, all the steps along the way, and then we're gonna knock out the whole front end all in this video today. But I wanted to just go ahead and right at the front, show y'all how absolutely awesome this thing is turning out. Uh, I know it looks like a little, uh, I kinda call it like the bug right now, cause it's got like the rounded top and then it sits so low in the back cause it's, Right now, just sitting on jack stands. I'm, I was propping up some stuff for the rear to show what it might look like and just figuring out placement and whatever, but that doesn't matter today. Today, we're gonna be running through how we did the whole front end of this thing. And nothing was ever straightforward, but we got everything figured out and it looks so good, man. I'm so excited to get this thing back out on trails. I've, uh, I've literally spent my last three paychecks just straight at like nothing else. Like I have enough money for gas to get to and from work and then everything else is going into this thing. But uh, front end's done and I am, I have just about all the parts for the rear coming in. I'm like 500 bucks short and then the rear end is going to be done. So hopefully that video is going to be coming out pretty soon as well. But Oh man, this thing's turning out so awesome. Look at that. But anyway, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. And uh, I appreciate the view. And I, if you enjoy it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe down below. All right, I look horrible, but you know what that means. We've been working on the Jeep. Uh, so let me kind of give you a little update on what we got done today. Um, and then I'll show y'all kind of what we're deciding right now. All right, so for these frame stiffeners, you do have to get it down to bare metal so that you can weld it in. So that's what we've done down in the middle. I've just tacked it in place, but we now have frame stiffeners. So we did pick up these 40 inch tires as well. Uh, they are 40 by 16 and a half pit bulls. And being as wide as they are, we're gonna be able to run super low tire pressure. But um, right now, where it's sitting is about a six inch stretch for the rear. So that's about where that would sit. All right, now this is about what a six inch stretch in the front would look like. So the bumper would definitely hit before, but it's not that bad. And then I still have tons of clearance back here. Do six inch front, six inch rear, that'll put me at a 119 overall because i'm roughly at a 107 right now anyway so that's what we've got done so far um and i'll keep you updated for tomorrow all right it's about 5 30 today um so today we had a little bit of a mixed batch my buddy came over and we moved this is, it's not as sketchy as it looks but we have our jack stands attached to um, the old radiator support now and so this sits at about ride height now. We have the cross member fully tacked in. This is tacked in still. Uh, we have the other side um, frame stiffener tacked in. The next thing we're gonna have to do is actually come in here and remove anything that's on this inner fender well. Eventually we're gonna dove it uh, before the first trip even I would say but um, we're not dubbing it right this second. But what we are gonna have to do is cut into here uh, to fit the hoops. Uh, one reason that guy came over is he wanted to show me exactly where he wanted the hoops uh, to be. And so they're gonna be on this wall, kind of right where this first little like seam is gonna be. That's gonna be where it goes up and in. And that means it'll come out about here. And that way uh, we can still kind of angle that uh, those shocks a little bit forward uh, because you don't want them just straight up and down for stability stake. Pulled everything off of this wall 
Got this apparently, I forgot that. Uh, it went to the charcoal canister, which doesn't exist anymore, but uh, I'll pull that off here in just a second. Um, but I'm gonna pull all these grounds off because like I said, the plan is to completely dove it all the way to here. Um, so on this other side, we have the AC right here. Um, I'm thinking I still want to run AC. I'm not positive on that, but the AC is going to have to be on this wall somewhere and uh, the coolant reservoir. I still have to have that. So other than that, we've removed everything. Um, fuse box, obviously it's got a bottom to it. It's up there, but um, I just have it off so I can have a little bit easier control of where I set it for right now and just keep it off this wall. Pulled all the wires, all that. One big jumbled mess right here. So many wires that were just like cut and like, this i don't know what it was supposed to be but like electrical taped ends like nothing like i don't know a lot of just kind of dumb looking stuff that it's all gonna go away but i will say that green with yellow stripe is the same that they cut and spliced over here so i'm not sure if they were trying to tie in lights or what but um i don't know all right, it's getting late, and I have a jumble of wires, but we are getting to about the point that I can't, uh, I got to go to bed, so uh, just wanted to point out one really fun thing right here. So first of all, the reason I'm pulling wires, um, I'm tracking down all the wires from the ABS pump and from the ABS system and uh, just removing them from this whole wire harness because ultimately I'd like to either move this inside or do something with it because the battery is no longer going to be up there. But I wanted to point out this fun little wire right here. So I don't know if I videoed it or not, but the other day um, I was pulling this apart and as you saw, there was a like kink of wires right here that have been messed with and one of them was this and it was tied together with speaker wire well i just tracked it down in the fuse box and that is for my fuel pump and they had just put random speaker wire in so we get to uh put that right back and like it, it they reach each other like they reach why did they plug it with speaker wire no, it does not make sense to me, but we're making some pretty good progress. We've got the whole, it doesn't look like it, but I promise we're making good progress. Um, but we're getting this thing together slowly, but surely. All right. It is now Sunday. Um, just got back from my buddy's house. His name's Jackson. Uh, he'll be starting a YouTube channel. I'll link that down below if he started it by now, but, um, he ended up welding me in that front truss as well as my lower links. Uh, we've got the Jeep back here. I'm setting up kind of exactly where I want this axle to line up. And then I'll be cutting my lowers to link and uh, I'll start tacking on uh, the upper mounts. And so um, more than likely I'll be visiting him again here tomorrow and uh, getting everything, all the links permanently welded with all the bungs in it and then getting um, the upper lengths um, exactly where they need to be uh, getting all that fully welded in and then I'll probably have to drag this thing up to Jackson's house in order to do um, the actual suspension work but making some good progress but I'll show y'all uh, some clips from him getting to uh, weld that truss in and all that kind of stuff. All right, this isn't for sure our width, but 
setting the axle in line with this tire now. Um, we've got kind of, that's where we're going to have it sit. So we're going to have plenty of room back here. We'll have to clearance the top out a little bit. Then we're going to have to clearance the whole front fender because that's not a lot of clearance, but we're going to think we're going to, um, get all that out of there. We got nothing there anymore. Anyway, just an empty space. So we're going to line the axle up with where I have the tire now and start tacking some stuff in. All right. So we ended up deciding on, um, just about exactly 35 inches of tubing. Um, and so I have this cut down, I have it flattened, got the other side welded up, and then this one, it sits flat. And so we are going to bevel each one of these just to make it a little bit easier uh, for my buddy to weld. I'll tack them and then I'll take it over to his place tomorrow. But, um, yeah, just kind of shaving the corner so that it's a little bit easier to penetrate down with that weld. And, um, yep, so that's what we're doing right here. So we've just kind of shaved around the edges to make it where a little bit easier to pull a bead on. But yeah, sits nice and flush. All right, going hot. All right, we're out here again today and we are getting pretty close. Uh, just made my second lower. We've got it beveled there a little bit. Got started doing plug welds, so I'm gonna have to. I will have to take the one uh, lower apart. Um, and then let me show you what we got over here. Now we will have to move where this upper is. Uh, it's a few inches too short because uh, you want to do that rule where whatever your tire size is, you want to divide that by four and that be your minimum separation between your lower and your upper mounts. So this needs to be about three and a half inches higher. So I'm gonna uh, use this as my fourth link mount over there. And then I'm gonna buy two towers so that it'll sit right there and just raise it up and be flat. Cause that's the other thing about right here. Uh, and you can't cut these mounts because you hit um, your Johnny joint will start hitting the um, actual uh, truss. So we're gonna have that one here straight up and we're, we will have to cut the tower a little bit. Then we'll have the other tower right about here. And then we're gonna cut that exhaust away and figure out um, kind of where it needs to go. But plenty of room over here. So three, uh, three link would be super easy. We will probably have to cut away for that fourth originally you can see it does line up if it uh would just go on uh like down here super low but because we're gonna have to tower it up it would hit that exhaust so that'll be our uh kind of takeaway for um the four link possible but not with the um, correct height on the axle side but um show you these welds in the daylight they're pretty so we have this one that he did and i came in and i did that one we don't obviously haven't been ground down anything so i think they're pretty good anyway just wanted to kind of show that off we're gonna have about 22 degrees of angulation per side which with both in consideration that puts us at 44 which should be perfect for um this not having a track bar now what i've seen a lot of people do is the upper where we have ours down that center tunnel they'll actually throw it over here and uh, attach it way outside and make it um, just super triangulated 
we didn't do that, uh, but I think that we're gonna just get away with it um, by moving the inside a little bit closer this way. Um, the outers are pretty much set, or the lowers are pretty much set at that seven degrees. Um, but I think that it'll end up working out just perfect. All right, so now that we have all those done, uh, we're gonna set that other link, that other lower for the other side in place. But uh, really the only thing left to do uh, that I can do here is I'm gonna take these uh, frame stiffeners right here. It's my speaker mount right now, but it's gonna go here. I gotta clean all this out. Um, and then I have to cut the lower off of the other side as well so that the um, upper can fit. I have, to fit, I have to take off the factory lower so that the um, other upper can uh, fit in and not hit that mount. Cause right here, it would have uh, kind of self-clearanced itself probably with those lowers, but we went ahead, took it off, plated it. And then once the frame stiffeners are up here, I'm going to weld stiffener to this little plate and we're gonna seal it off, make sure you can see a gap right there. I just didn't wanna weld or warp anything, uh, but eventually before this goes out or anything, we're gonna have that seamless so that, that water doesn't get trapped there. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing on that other side, but um, yeah, this thing's coming together. I do wanna kinda show you the truck just because it's so muddy in the background, but uh, we ended up taking it out. Um, I had to drive it to one of the bounty holes. This is driving to one hole. That was it. And, um, but it is just covered. I do have the video of kind of what led up to this, at least a little bit, but. Yeah, I was telling my buddies last time that the truck was this dirty, was uh, out duck hunting like five years ago, but super impressed with these Nitto G2s. Oh my gosh, they're uh, the Terra Grappler G2s and they were, all my friends were blown away by how well it handled the super thick mud out there. There were a couple of the dualies that got stuck, but granted they're a lot heavier and but they were on like Cooper STT Pros, which is what I used to run. Uh, but I thought it was so fun to just kind of uh, go around those guys that were all stuck. But anyway, uh, let's get back to the Jeep. All right, so we have this thing on tires for the first time. I actually got it done last night, but we don't have suspension. We just have these welded in uh, kind of to set it at, It's probably, this is probably gonna be about full bump. And we've got just enough space there. Um, we're, like I said, that is gonna be higher, uh, but this will be about what full bump will look like. And it is just barely clearing. Um, I'm actually really surprised that uh, it clears with this um, fender liner still there. Uh, but of course, when it's off camber and uh, rotating around, it will be hitting there. Um, but first time it's been on its own weight in the past probably month, uh, obviously haven't been working on it very often, but, um, we're going to load it up on the trailer and, um, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Uh, we're going to get my buddy over here and we're just going to winch it up. We're not going to drive it up, but yep, we have... That's our little uh, makeshift suspension, but man, it's exciting to kind of see this thing actually take form a little bit, but we have right now just the three link. I uh, didn't take the time to cut the exhaust out of the way just because I'm not exactly sure where we're going to route it, um, but uh, yep, we're going to load it up and get this thing fully welded together. 
we're gonna see if this is gonna work. We're winching it off the trailer. The whole passenger tire fell off there. It broke all the mounts holding the axle up. And so the axle shifted probably about six inches into the driver's side. So it no longer hits the motor, which is a plus, but the tires are not touching the ground and it's still not rolling. So he's gonna try to winch it again. Oh. Jack stands about to tip over, but it's probably fine. Yeah. I really don't want it to fall off the jack. I want to, no, like, well, ease it. I want it, yeah. Yeah. It's on the trailer now. So. All right, we're nice. It's fine. Amazed that my tack welds are holding anywhere. We don't have to repair the fence, sweet. So we turned it by lifting off the back end. Also wanted to point out, I have less than half an inch of down travel in the rear. Like when I lift up, that tire's immediately off the ground. Like I have zero, zero down travel. And that was a big issue I kept having off road. <laughs> He didn't want to scratch his new bumper, so we have a block of wood. Back behind. It's fine. Check. Uh, Go. Yep. Yeah. Ah. Uh, throw the throw the wood under the tire. Mm, yeah. Grab the other. One of those other blocks. There's one here and there's one. All right. Let's say there's one under the JK. There it is. We can swap. Oh. We can probably roll it from there. Yeah. Apparently it wasn't too bad of a weld because it ripped the frame before it broke the weld, but we're getting it all centered up. Ought to be good to go here in about 10 minutes. All right, we also have each of these ready. We've got two lowers, one upper. I'll have to go home and make another upper. Um, but got up that all prepped. We got this cut back off of the body and we have our upper mount in place. This side had to be cut off the axle. It's now gonna be used as an upper for the fourth link. It'll sit right there. This is a 10 degree, so this is also gonna match at that 10 degrees. So we're gonna have to line up the bolt holes because they're not 
exact. This mouth's just a little bit taller. And so we're gonna have to uh, grind it down ever so slightly because there's not a lot of play in these because you'll start hitting uh, your joint. will start hitting on this as it articulates. But we have that going. We've got uh, the cross member. Didn't change anything with it. Just kind of prepped the surfaces a little bit. Also uh, found that we had flipped the cross member I had. Uh, then these will be welded in just like that. So it'll still line up with the bolt hole down in there. So you can still get a socket in there, but it kind of adds the rigidity to it. Um, but other than that, I mean, we're just kind of chugging away at it, but yeah, these are some pretty welds, but he did a, he's doing a good job. He's got a, an actual 210 or 220 welder um, that runs on gas. And so he's doing all of my uh, official burn-ins. I did all the tacks with just my little 110. Uh, but yeah, we're making some great progress today. Getting our shock hoops made up. All right, we have the shocks fully compressed, so we're setting up the hoops right now. So we have our marks where it's gonna sit, and we're cutting so that we can have a circle. Uh, we're gonna have a piece of tube that comes out a little bit, and then the shock hoop will sit on that. But here's kind of the final product. That'll do her. cut this off getting better with the plasma cutter but we got the this uh, mount off that was the old lower link mount and then we got the exhaust plumbed out so now there's room to go from the new location of the upper right there to the upper mount there we might, I think that this is okay. It might need to clearance a little bit up, but where it's sitting right now is at full bump. But what I'm gonna do is take this into a muffler shop and basically just already have the link set up and say, work the exhaust around this, however you have to do it. Um, more than likely, what, what it'll do is, instead of coming underneath here, we'll go in front 
and out together there, but we'll see how they end up doing it. I'm leaving that in their hands. All right, so we have all four links in there. You can see, terrible angle, but so the reason you do one that's right-hand thread and one that's left-hand thread is so that you can just twist it and this is extending it out. So we're aligning the dead center right back up. Um, and then we'll have plenty of threads to uh, adjust. They're each getting a little further out, but you just gotta line everything up so that it'll be top dead center. And then you're gonna measure from uh, one spot on this knuckle to right back and then you make sure that your wheel bases match so that way your axle is not twisted like this because that'll cause um, uneven wear on the tires but so you want your axle to be dead straight this way but also dead straight in the middle so we're again just lining up that string with the mark we made earlier cycling through suspension we're at 14 inches there out of the 16 inches of possible travel and we're pretty much maxed out on what we can do without getting just crazy sketchy. But there is plenty of room under here, plenty of room over here, nothing's close to hitting. So I think that we're pretty much golden. So uh, we're gonna cycle it the other way and then um, fully weld everything else in. But everything looks good, everything's lining up well. All right, so as if the jack stand with the tube wasn't sketchy enough we now have an engine hoist and we're just kind of praying that it's kind of in the center ish it's moving the ac condenser right now but all right so when it tops out at the suspension you can see it's kicking that o-ring because the uh shock itself is twisting so i have that right there all right we got everything installed got the hood put back placed in place um it'll be nice to cut this out because when i dove it i'll cut here pull everything in cut the hood to match but it's the most complete this thing has looked in a long time but it's awesome just to kind of see everything come together slowly but surely um, but all this is AC condenser and we have trans cooler down there all that's gonna be moved it's gonna be all new stuff uh, still have this is no fender well whatsoever. So I'll have to have something put in there just so that I can mount the fuse box back up somewhere and uh, little things like that. But here's the final stance. All right, now we're going to get nitrogen in the front shocks and put it up at ride height. This is gonna be what full bump looks like though. Whew, a lot of work. All right, here's the final lift height. This is how we're, <laughs> this is how we're leaving it. Yeah. That, like, I can't even verbally express to you how crazy this looks. <laughs> and being on a trailer just to make it that much more sketchy. How much do you want to know? Mm. Start with 75, maybe. Well, start at 100. See where the needle is sitting? The yeah. first red mark is 100. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not very There's precise. no sneaking up on it. No. Like I said, you just kind of like, you just kind of sit here and kind of hit it like this. I hear a little going. Oop, there's something. It's fine if it's a little higher right out of the gate. Yeah. It's not like it's gonna be, or if it sits a little low right out of the gate, honestly. Okay, these hold a lot more than mine do, because you can like hear it all moving over. The needle hasn't moved yet. 100 now?
<laughs> we can try just bleeding like a little bit out of it, but, at a time. but it's such high pressure as soon as you push the valve, it's like... Oh, yeah. We did them. So All right, and here's kind of the final lift height. This thing's just crazy big compared to what I was thinking, but... Should have plenty of up travel. We've got about four and a half inches. And so we'll kind of adjust it as we go, but it'll be a great start. And I think that once we get some air out of these tires, it's gonna ride just beautifully, but super excited to start on the rear. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start ordering parts, but man, I'm excited for this build. This is turning out awesome. Yeah. Bump it, just like hit it a few times. Right before the lightning storm too. 